Hey, thank you all so much. I'm Matt Gates, uh, Congressman from North Florida. And I want to thank Crest so much for the, the enthusiasm you've added to our efforts to try to gain broader consensus on the issues of renewable energy deployment and uh, certainly climate change. Uh, I'm a Republican who believes in the science of climate change. I believe it's obvious. And I think that human contribution to climate change is something that we need to acknowledge in a far broader sense here in the Congress. And then hopefully when we do that and move beyond the science that is before us, we can start working on innovative solutions. And there are a few broad categories I think those fit into. Initially, I know we've had a lot of discussions about the need to improve the electric grid. Uh, right now, the debate in the Congress isn't about whether or not this ought to be a national priority. There is strong bipartisan consensus that is a consequence of the American Society of Civil Engineers giving our grid a D plus, that there's a lot of room for improvement. Where there's disagreement is how that ought to be funded. Uh, on the left, some of my colleagues that are enthusiastic about improvements believe that they should all be funded publicly. And then there are those of us on the right who believe that we need an all of the above strategy. We need to leverage every bit of capital we possibly can from the federal government, from state governments, even from our local communities, and then obviously the private sector to ensure that we're not creating dirty energy and then leaking it off the grid. And that we have a grid that is worthy of the great innovations that I think are coming forward in our, in our economy. Uh, I think we also need better utilization of our public lands. This is an area where a lot of people on the right uh, get their heads nodding and come into agreement with our viewpoint. Right now, the system we have for innovators to access public lands, to tinker and try and research and development and test things is pretty constrained. It's a special interest driven system like far too many systems um, drafted by the federal government can be. And so by creating broader access for people to innovate on federal lands, I think we can accelerate a lot of the good ideas that are happening in our country. We also need a far more inclusive technology doctrine. And I think this is something that the federal government will play a unique role in. I, I reference nuclear specifically. Right now, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is limiting uh, the development of modular nuclear reactors, uh, preferring instead the $40 billion light water reactors. And if I made $40 billion light water reactors, I would want people to buy nothing but $40 billion light water reactors. But uh, I know that particularly in rural America, we can have greater connectivity with cleaner energy if we allowed a modular nuclear. And in developing that broader technology doctrine, I think we also need to look strong at hydropower. Hydropower is the cleanest, uh, cheapest power that's available in our country, really in the world in a, in a lot of ways. If you don't believe me, ask anybody who mines Bitcoin. They're all like moths to the flame when it comes to hydropower. But too often, uh, local commissions and state governments impair our full development of hydropower. And I think that if we had a national doctrine that was more inclusive, we could preempt some of those, uh, I think, inhibiting local regulations. And the other way to improve our technology doctrine is, is through the use of the tax code. I was the Ways and Means Chairman in the Florida Legislature, and we did everything we could to try to incentivize renewable production, uh, where people have the opportunity to make capital investment in their systems to be able to have more closed circuit systems. And we saw this particularly in, in the agriculture space with dairy farmers, with sugar growers, the ability to, um, to ensure that they are utilizing renewables as a part of their normal processes and systems. And I think that not only can the federal government play a big role there, but our state governments, we should be doing everything we can to find those tax credit opportunities that have been successful in the several states and then try to get those modeled elsewhere. And, and I think ultimately, uh, trade policy informs on our ability to be able to combat these major challenges. One of the things that's so troubling to me is that we have lost a lot of market share on solar, not as a consequence of our slower innovation, but as a consequence of theft of intellectual property. America owned solar globally. We were the photovoltaic market, and then the Chinese, uh, in large part, stole our IP replicated it without the upfront R&D costs, and now they occupy about half of the global market share. The reason that is a problem for those of us who are concerned about climate change is that if you hollow out the American innovator, if you replace the American innovator, there is no backfill for that. China is not going to develop the next innovation. They have a command economy. They recognize that as their weakness. So they always have to be looking for the next innovation to steal. And if we don't have an innovative class that we're supporting through protection of their global intellectual property rights, then I think the next person that might come up with the next thing that allows us to use energy in a better way 
uh, could, could see the possibility of that investment or that innovation really diminished because the United States doesn't take those things seriously. I'm proud of the president for putting $50 billion in tariffs on Chinese tech and really as a punishment for their improper behavior. And my hope is that that sends the message along with some of the other stuff that we're doing. Uh, ultimately, I know that this is a generational challenge. Uh, it should, it is too often a partisan one, but it really shouldn't be. And I'm finding more and more that people elected to Congress under the age of 50 are more inclined to acknowledge the obvious science of climate change and are more willing to work together towards solutions. And so if we're able to break away from some of the dogmas that I think have paralyzed our progress, I think that we've got an opportunity to make that generational change and to meet the generational challenge that's before us. Uh, I've got legislation that, that really lays out those major category areas uh, in an ambitious way and hopefully frames up the debate so that there are individual bills that can springboard off of my concepts. And I'm proud to see that Republicans and Democrats are coming up with great legislation on carbon capture uh, and, and other issues that'll help us along the way. So that's my approach. My legislation is the Green Real Deal. Uh, thank you to Crest for endorsing it and supporting it and help us make the case to our colleagues. And as we see more legislation emerge consistent with our principles, that'll be reflective of our success in making the case.